Let's now see how we can use an oscilloscope to measure to measure um, frequency and also the velocity of sound. Suppose uh, we have a loudspeaker. Loudspeaker, and let's say that this loudspeaker is generating a sound. Now, uh, um, suppose that this sound has a, a certain frequency, certain frequency F. Okay, it's generated by some electronics or some uh, musical instruments. Um, maybe. Now let's say now I have a, a microphone in front of it. This microphone, and this microphone, this microphone um, is connected to an instrument called an oscilloscope. Oscilloscope. Uh, now an oscilloscope is a uh, if you have not seen one or used one before it is a bit like a, a, a small television and it what it does is that it takes um, a voltage it takes a voltage from some instrument like say the microphone or some something else and it will plot a graph it will plot a graph of that voltage. Okay, so it would plot a graph of that voltage, the voltage that comes comes in from, from the instrument against time. Against time. Now on an oscilloscope you'll see lots of um let's see let me draw this smaller. So there's there's a screen on the oscilloscope. Which will plot this graph uh, of the voltage coming in against time, and if you have a loudspeaker uh, receiving a sound, for example, the the pressure sound is is basically like a pressure wave. So you have a fluctuating, a, a changing pressure on, on the microphone. And the microphone is an instrument basically that converts the, the pressure wave from the sound into a voltage wave. So meaning a, an oscillating, a changing voltage, voltage that keeps changing with time. So when the oscilloscope receives this voltage, it will display a graph that plots that voltage against time. So we would get a graph on the display screen of, of the oscilloscope. Now there are, if you if you look at an oscilloscope, you'll find um, many knobs on the oscilloscope. Right, these are knobs that you can turn, and you can use it to adjust things like uh, the scale of the voltage uh, and, and the time, the scale of the of the time on the graph, and there are other things that you can adjust as well. It it might look quite complicated, but basically, if you adjust, uh, there are knobs that you can use to adjust uh, the graph, basically to to magnify the graph in in either direction. So, but for for what I'm going to talk about, I I won't go into those details. I'm just going to assume that. I have this instrument called an oscilloscope and that will plot a graph. It will take, take the voltage from the microphone and plot the graph. So I get a graph of the voltage against time. And from this voltage, I would be uh, from this graph, I would be able to, for example, determine the frequency of the sound wave. So how can I do that? Let me draw a bigger graph. Let's say um, 
Let's draw a bigger graph. Okay, let's say that's time, and let's say I've adjusted my knob so that um, these are my uh, markings, and that's one, two, three. There will be markings on, on, on the oscilloscope to uh, for the graph, and let's say I've adjusted it so that one marking, one or one division, as it is called, is one millisecond. Okay, that's one one interval here is called one division. All right, and there's some voltage here. I, I won't uh, worry about the, the scale of this. But on the graph, um, I would I would see probably something that looks like this. Okay. So this is what you may see: a sound, uh, uh, a wave that comes from uh, a wave pattern that comes from the sound. So from this graph, what we see is that uh, uh, a graph that keeps repeating itself. Okay, that as as the pressure here keeps changing. Uh, with every uh, cycle of the of the wave, so what you can see here is that one cycle. This this would represent one cycle, one repeating pattern, and the corresponding time is the period. This is the period, which I'll call big T. So this means that. On the oscilloscope, I would be able to read off the value uh, of, of this period. And suppose that I find a value here of say 2.27 minutes, so that the period is, is actually uh, 2.27 milliseconds. Suppose that this is what I what I measure. Okay. Now from this, from this I can then calculate the frequency. Because frequency is equal to one over the period. Now if I substitute this into the formula, I can find the frequency. So let's do it. One over now, as with most formula that we learn, we should convert this to SR units first, meaning seconds. So instead of millisecond, milli is 1 over 1000, I should divide this by 1000. So that becomes 0 0.00227 seconds. And if you calculate this, the answer is about 440 hertz. So that is the frequency that I would measure uh, in this example. So that's how we can use an oscilloscope to measure the frequency. Now in next step, I will talk about how we can measure velo velocity of the sound. Um, now first we must measure the wavelength of this sound. To measure the wavelength, the way to do it is to um, is to put a let's say a metal sheet okay, to put a metal sheet in front of the loudspeaker and I'll put this metal sheet here so that the sound wave the sound wave uh, tra travels to the sheet metal sheet and it gets reflected gets reflected back and I, I would end up with um, two waves one going to the right one going to the left right two waves meeting each other and when two waves with the same uh, frequency and maybe roughly the same amplitude meet each other I would get a stationary wave now remember what happens with a stationary wave we have nodes and anti-nodes along 
along this line. So meaning that if I move the loudspeaker, uh, if I move the microphone along this line, I would be moving through nodes and anti nodes of the wave. And if I move through nodes and anti nodes, it means that the sound will get louder and softer and louder and soft, softer at the nodes and louder at the anti nodes. Okay, so let's um, let me maybe say that suppose uh, as I move as I move this loudspeaker uh, this microphone along. As the sound gets louder and softer, okay, maybe at, at this position it is soft, at this position it is soft, and perhaps at, at this position it becomes loud, so that's my anti note, this position becomes loud, and so on. Okay. I would be able to see whether it becomes louder or softer. Uh, from the oscilloscope, for example, as the as this amplitude, all right. If I move to a place where it is loud, the amplitude will become bigger because the say the molecules here or the pressure here would be oscillating with the biggest amplitude. Now, at the node where it is soft, it would be the the pressure or the molecules would be oscillating at a smaller amplitude, and I'll I'll get a smaller amplitude in the graph. So I can see this graph. Grow, growing in amplitude or, or becoming smaller in amplitude. So from that I can tell the place where it is soft or loud. So I would move this microphone and find the place where this amplitude is smallest and I'll, I would uh, maybe put a mark here maybe on a, on a piece of sticker or paper that I put uh, next to the microphone and then I'll move the microphone slowly to the next position where it becomes the softest again. And I'll put a mark there and then I'll keep doing it. And maybe I'll mark out a few places where it is soft. And then I'll take a ruler and I'll measure this distance. I'll measure the distance between uh, soft and soft positions. And that distance would be half the wavelength. As we understand from uh, standing waves. So this distance, this distance, let's say uh, I measure a value, let's say I measure a value of 37.5 centimeter, just for example, right, suppose that I actually do this experiment. It's 37.5 centimeters. Since I know that this must be equal to half a wavelength, that's the distance between two nodes, I can then find uh, the value of a wavelength. So a wavelength would be equal to twice of this. I'm going to convert this to meters, to SI units, so that would be twice of 0 0.375. And the answer, the answer is uh, 0 0.75 meter. So now that I have the wavelength as and the frequency, I can finally calculate the velocity because v the velocity is equal to f lambda frequency times wavelength. And frequency is 440 440 hertz. Wavelength is 0 0.75 meters. So if I multiply this the answer that I'll get is 330 meters per second. So in this way, I can measure the speed of sound using an oscilloscope and using what we know about standing wave or stationary waves.